We have a couple of videos that people have sent in, and, and we're encouraging you to send us other videos. Um, one of the things we wanted was uh, videos of your favorite features that uh, people uh, are interested in, just showcasing, you know, five minutes or less, you like a certain feature of Delphi, do a short video and, and showcase that feature and tell us why you love it. Yep, put you it up know, on YouTube like and it. Yeah. hashtag it with uh, Delphi Week and we'll and, put, put it out there. And we'll find it. Uh, what we have is a couple partner videos. Uh, let's see. The first one is Fix Insight. Uh, this one's cool. Okay. So let's uh, start that one. And then we have another one by DevArt, one of our technology, another technology partner. Oh, and we've got um, Boyan on the line too. Excellent. Okay. So Boyan, maybe we'll come to you in just a moment. Let me, this one is about just under three minutes. So let's take a look at it. Hello. I'm Roman Yankovsky, and in this short video, I will introduce FixInsight tool for Delphi. Static code analysis performed by FixInsight can help you find issues that cannot be found by Delphi compiler. You can think of FixInsight as a compiler extension. Let me show a quick demo. There is a simple demo project that compiles without hints or warnings. But it still has a number of issues that can be found with static analysis in a couple of clicks. Okay, let's run fix inside. Run. There are a number of warning messages in the fix inside page of messages window. Let's go through. Empty else block. We see that actually it's not empty, but somebody accidentally put a sem semicolon here. There's definitely an issue. Unreachable code. That's obvious. This line of code will never be executed. <clears throat> or else if condition. It's usually a copy and paste issue if and else if statements have the same condition you see. Format parameter count mismatch. It's something that is not being checked by compiler, but with static analysis you can find such issues. There are one, two, three placeholders and only two parameters. This will compile, but will never work. A loop iterator could be out of range. Definitely it will be out of range, because minus one is missing. Fix inside has even more rules and checks. You can download it at sourceoddity.com slash fix inside and try it yourself. And only in February you can use Delphi Week coupon to get 20% discount. Thank you for your interest. Bye. Okay, that was really cool. So, Jim. I, yeah, everything he showed there I've done before in my code. <laughs> At least once. And again, that was, uh, the URL was. Fixed, it's a uh, source code oddity. Okay. I have it right here. I'll put it in the chat window. Great. Discount code Delphi week. So I think with the discount code, let me look at the page again here. It makes it uh, $77 with the discount code, which I tell you what, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, I've done everything in there a few times. And then our tech partners at DevArt, they have uh, data access components, and they also have drivers that work with uh, DB Express. They sent us a video 
to play during Delphi week, so let's go to that one. Devart is glad to introduce our flagship products, data access components that allow connection to all the popular databases, Entity Doc and ORM for Delphi with Link U support, Secure Bridge, a solution for establishing secure connection via SSH, SSL and SFTP protocols. Next, we will consider a demo of creating a cross-platform database application for SQL Server for Windows, Mac OS, iOS and Android. Now we are going to create a cross-platform database application for SQL Server. Drop Unit Connection and SQL Server Data Provider Components on the form. Then select a data provider name in Unit Connection. Specify here the server, database, username and password options. Now you can open connection to SQL Server. For the query, drop the UniQuery component on the form, double-click on it and input the SQL query. Now you can drop the bind source DB component on the form and link it to UniQuery. Then we can add controls. Navigator, T edits, Tmemo, and the image and link the edit controls with UniQuery using live binding. Run our application on the Windows target platform and check whether everything works fine. Now select the macOS target platform and run our application. As we can see our application has successfully launched and connected to MS SQL Server on macOS. Let's try to run our application on iOS. The application is launched successfully on iOS device as well. And finally, let's see if we can run our application on an Android device. As we can see, our application runs and establishes connection on every possible target platform. You see how easy it is to create a cross-platform database application for SQL Server. Using our data access components, you will be able to create your own cross-platform database applications in the same easy way for many other databases. Entity Doc is an ORM solution for Delphi that allows object relational mapping of database objects to Delphi classes with full support of encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism and other OOP features. To provide an opportunity to create cross-database applications, Entity Doc supports Link Queue as a database-independent query language. In addition, there is a powerful Visual ORM model designer with code generation that makes usage of ORM technologies in Delphi extremely handy. Let's demonstrate a simple example of using Entity Doc in Delphi. As a source material, we have an SQLite database with two tables. A depth table contains a list of departments and AMP contains a list of employees. The tables are related by a foreign key. An Entity Developer tool that is distributed with Entity Doc will help us to automatically generate a set of modules with all necessary classes for work with our database in Delphi. We won't dwell on the detailed settings for each page of the model creating wizard. We'll just specify the path of our database and leave all other parameters by default. As you can see, Entity Developer has created two classes that correspond to two tables in the database and created one-to-many relation between them. Let's start to create our application. Entity Doc includes components that are familiar to every developer who ever created a database application. These components are connection, dataset, data source that we are going to drop on the main form of our application. However, since Entity Doc is not literally data access components, then to implement direct interaction with the database, they can use any well-known data access components, DB Express, ADO, etc. We are working with SQLite database, so we will use the Vart SQLite data access components. For this, add a Light Deck data provider onto the form. Next, we drop a DB grid component on the form and bind it with the data source as usually. 
Let's proceed to the most interesting part of our demo, code writing. As it was said above, Entity Doc is not data access components, and it is abstracted from specific DBMSs. Therefore, to write data retrieving queries in Entity Doc, they use a universal language, LinkQ. The advantage of using a universal language is obvious. A query is written only once. There's no need to take into account the specificity of a particular database. Thus, the query will be executed correctly regardless of the database that is currently used by the application. Now we are to add the modules needed for query composing to the user section and declare some three variables, for illustrative purposes only. A query variable will contain the composed query. Depth and AMP variables will be used as query arguments. As you can see, the LinkQ language implementation in Entity Doc is maximally convenient for programmers and it allows using all the capabilities of, of the code editor when writing queries, such as tooltips. This eliminates errors at the level of code writing. The final step is to tell the data context to execute our query and to specify the retrieved elements collection as a data source for the dataset components. Now we can compile and run the application. You can see the application development process using Entity Doc is very simple, while Entity Doc architecture provides a wide range of advantages inherent in ORAM. Thanks for attention. For more info, visit our website. Okay, that was great. That was another example. Let me uh, switch back to the Delphi page. There we go. Of uh, videos people are sending along. Um, and now I think, uh, Jim, if you want to bring Boyan and Boy Boy and Mitoff of Mitoff Software is uh, is on with us, and I think we're just getting him connected in. Uh, Boyan is doing a Technology Partner Spotlight in a few weeks, but uh, he's a well-known member of the Delphi community, uh, tech partner as well. So right, let's... Boyan, you should be unmuted now. Hello. Hey guys, congratulations on the 20th anniversary. It has been a fantastic ride. Yeah, no, we're we're uh, we're having fun. We're also, you know, trying to make sure that we're listening to the the Delphi members and and how we're looking forward and moving forward as well. I can't wait to see your your technology partner spotlight uh, here in in a few weeks uh, on a Friday. But I saw that you were an attendee and wanted to get the chance to say hi. Uh, and uh, why don't you tell everybody a little about Metoff Software? But even before that, about uh, how did you uh, how did you hear about Delphi? When did you get started in Delphi? And, and what's your favorite feature of Delphi? Sure, let's start with uh, history. Actually, uh, I became familiar with uh, Borland in those days, or Embarcadero as it is known today, uh, somewhere around uh, night, uh, I believe it was uh, 89 or so. And uh, 89 or 90, uh, I was doing, uh, I was learning C++, and uh, then there was uh, this Turbo C++ thing that was a fantastic tool from uh, Borland, and I started using it in uh, version one of uh, uh, Borland C++, uh, Turbo C++. And uh, then uh, came, uh, I believe, 1994 or 95, I, uh, 94, yes. So I was doing uh, heavy uh, uh, turbo C++ development, mainly in DOS, and I was trying to do some development in Windows, and we needed to connect to some database and extract information from the database and stuff. And uh, then this fantastic tool came called Delphi One, and I jumped right into it. And uh, I mean, boy, was it uh, fantastic. So that's how I uh, got familiar with uh, Delphi. And the rest is uh, history, I guess. So that is that is briefly the history of how I uh, became to know uh, Delphi. And Boyan, why don't you say a few words again about Metoff Software, your software sure. company that builds components. Let me bring up uh, the page. Thank you. Uh, if I can... Do that correctly. There we go. There we go. Well, we offer uh, components uh, for Delphi and C++ Builder. 
uh, they are for uh, video processing, audio processing, digital signal processing, computer vision, artificial intelligence. Uh, we have uh, visual instrumentation components such as uh, gauges, uh, clocks, uh, displays and stuff. We have plotting library. And uh, we also offer a variety of other interesting technologies, including uh, open wire based uh, visual light binding functionality. All of the components are based on the open source developed by uh, me library uh, called, called open wire. And uh, we also have visualization tools that allow uh, the users uh, to visually design software without writing code uh, using the open wire uh, visual editor. And uh, we are uh, developing uh, other products, uh, including uh, products for purely graphical development, intended for non-developers, uh, obviously. And uh, we, uh, I am actually proud to announce for first time, right here, right now, uh, that uh, there is already in existence open wire studio version that can program Arduino. So, uh, ah, very cool. We are, we are officially right now for first time announcing that we do have Arduino product. So that 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 is uh, something pretty much nobody else uh, has heard before. You guys, congratulations! Wow. Is it on the website so, someplace? I can I download that now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is uh, something that I am running here, and I am uh, working on it, and I'm having great fun programming my Arduino board, but that's not something that is officially available. However, there should be a version available in the next two to three weeks uh, for, uh, I mean, I say beta for people to play with. There's a question here from Jatin. He says, do you have any uh, components that will allow you to take images and create a movie? Absolutely. Both Video Lab and Basic Video have exactly this type of functionality. And there is even demo included in the libraries that shows exactly that, taking bitmaps and creating video out of them. And he says, thank you. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Dustin is saying Arduino support. Awesome. Put a big smiley on that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking about Arduinos all day today with all the news going yeah. on with the new Arduino. and a Raspberry Pi uh, 2 with yeah, a gigabyte. Pi and yeah. There's lots of fun for being able to do development uh, that includes some of these small system boards. Really neat. Congratulations. I can't wait to, can't wait to see you. it. Yeah. But I know. I, I, go ahead. I don't. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, go to webinar allows that. But uh, I can even show you a sneak peek if you wish. Yeah, we can. I think what we can do is just make you. Uh, since you're a panelist, we can make you a presenter. Uh, we'll do that uh, if you're ready. You can decide when you want to turn on uh, your when when you want to turn you on your screen. Me, so you can give me um, ten seconds. Okay. Uh, no problem. I turned on. He's on. You're on presenter, so since you're on your screen, you can show it. So yeah. how, how I can select? Okay, I think I can select uh, monitor one. Okay. Yep. So can you see the monitor? Not yet. Uh, now we can. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is caught that ops. Yeah, it went to the wrong monitor, of course. But um, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, demonstrate a uh, control, let's say, of a uh, stepper motor. So let's say I'm dropping a stepper motor and I can connect it to four of the pins on the, on the Arduino board. It's been a long day, obviously, here. And uh, now, uh, once when this is done, of course, yeah, I can do some other settings. All I need to do is press this button the code is generated and I can compile it and I can program it into my board. And I can put logic, I can put, uh, uh, I can uh, put uh, some math functions and everything else and uh, decide how the things are going to be controlled. I can set the matter 
the motor to be enabled or disabled based on uh, uh, one of the other pins. So as example, I can connect this pin on Arduino to enable my motor. So I can put a button and this button can control, I mean, start the motor. And I can uh, select uh, the speed of the motor. I was actually experimenting with that earlier. Uh, I can take one of the analog pins take uh, a multiplier so we can uh, decide by how much we want to uh, increase the speed, put a coefficient, let's say, a hundred times. And with this, with this, uh, with uh, this, in essence, design, I can control both enable the motor and I can control the speed of the motor. And again, I just press the button and here is the cot and I can, well, sorry for that. It's still obviously in development. I was working earlier today on it. Uh, I can relate to that. Some, I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, there is, uh, there is uh, still some uh, uh, error in the code generation. But in any case, this is, uh, this is uh, for first time live uh, Arduino visual design. Yeah, that's an excellent point. I've got some Arduino boards at home uh, with... Uh, motors and fans and things so i i can't wait to to try this out it's going to be really cool yeah you can you can see that how rough it is even even some of the components don't have uh, images yet right so it's uh, very very fresh out of the baking excellent <laughs> let me uh i'll take back let's see how we can uh uh Oh wait! I I'm... probably should click stop sharing or something. No, I can. I can take. Uh, I can you take back control change here. Presenter. Yeah, I'm just. I'm doing that, and I'll show the screen okay. back over here. No, that was great. I just wanted to get back to the meetoff.com website. Uh, yeah, I've got these Arduinos with all sorts of uh, wires and gears and fans. Um, at home, one of my daughters was. Uh, was studying art at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago, and one of the things that they taught them how to do is is to create is to how to program these Arduinos to create kinetic sculptures as oh, part of it as cool. part of art school projects. So, um, sort of a fun way to uh, to have a little bit of automation and programming experience, but really more in the artistic realm of life. Now she's doing two D and three D animation in New York, but. Uh, so I got the Arduino boards. <laughs> yeah, she worked on the uh, some of the Super Bowl commercials. She worked on the what was it? Invisible. There was that invisible actress who was wandering around New York, thinking she was invisible. Uh, in any case. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Yep. So, um, but I'm a proud father that way. But boy, and this was really great. Thank you for the sneak peek for everyone. Um, Everybody thought that was really cool. I uh, also in one of the skill sprints last week, when I think it was when you were doing your parallel programming, Jim, somebody was saying, "How about a, a neural network, uh, you know, kind of application demo?" And 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 Metoff software has uh, neural network uh, support in the intelligence lab. So I'll have to go back to that uh, attendee because I find it in the question log and send him an email saying, "Check out intelligence lab, which is on the screen right now." Yeah. Yep. Actually, yeah, I forgot to mention it earlier. We have so many products that uh, we forgot to mention the artificial intelligence as yep. well. So, yes, we do have components for artificial intelligence. And by the way, some of the components already uh, can use GPU for uh, for GPU uh, enhanced computation, including some of the artificial intelligence components. Uh, if you have powerful GPU like Tesla or one of the NVIDIA uh, GPUs and stuff, uh, you can run the, the artificial intelligence actually inside the GPU, much about 10 times faster than on the CPU. Oh, wow. No, I'd love a Tesla board. I could plug it in uh, to this computer here, get myself a whole bunch of cores, 1,000 GPUs or something, depending yeah. on the Tesla board model, of course. But... Uh, this is really great, boy, and I, again, I can't wait to uh, to see more of what you'll show on the technology partner uh, spotlight that's coming up. And oh, I should remember where that is again while we're here. Not that one. I've, this is why somebody's saying, "How come you have so many?" Uh, oh, I got to go back further. 
Uh, I'm, I'm close. Close. I'm getting close. I've got the link up here. Oh, you do? Yeah. I'll, I'll change over and I'll just do the... Uh, oh, I found it. Found it? Okay. I got to it. Uh, so Boyan will be back with us March 6th, Friday, March 6th. Uh, we're up at development, audio, video, DSP, computer vision, and more. So I suspect that the Arduino uh, uh, with open wire might be a little further along by then. You're welcome to show that as well as all the products that uh, that Metal Software has. So we'll see you on Friday, March 6th at 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank thanks you, for taking part in Delphi Week. Uh, we'll make sure to uh, tweet out uh, for people to to check back with Metoff Software's website uh, if they want to uh, if, or if they have uh, a need for doing Arduino-based development. Very cool.